So now in this video, we have an NPN bipolar junction transistor. I'm using the 2N3904, wired as a switch, but uh, when I release the signal there, the NPN bipolar junction transistor does not turn off automatically. And you also know this, that at uh, some point it fades before it turns off. When it's uh, completely off, we consider that cutoff for a transistor. When um, the LED is on fully, the transistor is conducting, um, you know, as well as it can in the circuit. That is uh, saturated. And then when you see the fade right there, that is when you're in the active region of the NPN bipolar junction transistor. I can zoom in a little bit so you can see that uh, right there. Now uh, we we'll look at the power supply and you can see the uh, current involved. So when I held the button down, it's going to say 12 milliamps. I think things might conduct a little bit better when they heat up, so it might go to 13. But in any case, when I release it, we got 12 milliamps for a while, and then we got that fade down. Um, so saturated, and then active region, and then cut off when it comes to what the transistor is doing. So now, being a switch, the uh, NPN bipolar junction transistor, I'm using a 2N3904. Um, bottom pin there is the emitter. There you can see it's the left when you're looking at the front. Uh, base is in the middle, and then collector on top. Uh, right there or to the right when you're looking at it flat remember you got to put the led in the right way short lead the cathode towards negative long lead the anode towards positive for it to light up it's not lighting up right now because the transistor is not conducting it's an off switch basically it's an insulator when we close the switch a couple things capacitor instantly uh, charges i do have current limit on the power supply so you know it takes a little bit of time to uh start uh or to charge but uh pretty close to instantly and then also current uh, starts flowing once you get 0.6 uh, volts so that will uh, pull it down briefly you know because I have uh, current through the power supply limited but uh, you know pretty close to instantly we'll get a little bit of base 2 emitter current when it comes to transistor when you get uh, the uh, bipolar junction transistors and then this is the NPN version a little bit of base 2 emitter current allows many times as much current to flow through collector to emitter. Ultimately, in this case, the load is going to limit the current when we are saturated, uh, when the transistor is on fully. When the current started going down, that is when the transistor started limiting current because it had less and less base 2 emitter current. If you have a gain of 100, then you need... Uh, one milliamp of current base to emitter to allow a hundred milliamps of current to flow through so just kind of a quick review Hopefully you already uh, know that so yeah, we have a uh, uh, Five volts this drops about 0.6 volts that'll put about 4.4 volts across the resistor when the uh, capacitor is fully charged and You'll get about 0.44 milliamps of current so while the switch is closed, this will allow up to 44 milliamps of current. But as we saw, the current was lower because the load was lowering it. And so we're not going to go over the current for the load. That's uh, uh, basic stuff that uh, I probably already uh, have heard uh, many times. So when it comes to the capacitor, as I said before, you close the switch. That's going to charge the capacitor practically instantly if we had like a battery or uh, something but I did limit the uh, power supply current right there so if I miss wire or something it won't blow the LED that's enough current to uh, keep an LED from being damaged and um, so that's how we have it but there you can see the capacitor um, this all heads towards negative that's a direct connection to positive when I press the button bottom two pins are always connected when it comes to the switch and then the top two are always connected when you press the button it connects all four together and that's one reason why i got uh, both these components here this uh, pops out of the board uh, really easy um so i want to make sure these two are uh, connected in case that pops out um so just be aware that these do uh, pop out of the board but uh, otherwise they, they fit you know okay so 100 microfarad, we could go with the larger value capacitor to make it take longer. You'd want to, you know, um, cut down the uh, direct connection even more if uh, you had a larger one. This is probably, uh, 
you know, close to the maximum size capacitor you want to uh, short to a power supply to instantly charge it. So you could add a little uh, resistor right there. Wouldn't really make any difference to the circuit, uh, but would, uh, you know, slow down the capacitor charge. Uh, of course, it discharges through the resistance, so you don't have to add anything to that. And uh, so, yeah, that is uh, really about it. The capacitor uh, will build up a charge. We did the PNP version uh, in the last video, um, but usually uh, capacitors are to the uh, negative supply and uh, probably working with like NPN, bipolar junction transistors and stuff. Um, usually their uh, voltage is in relationship to ground. Um, so this probably makes more sense than the last video did. Uh, so it charges, and then when you open the switch, then it provides the current. This is a direct connection um, right there. And, uh, you know, there's traces and stuff, but uh, the negative side of the capacitor is coming back over here. So you got a little current path flow there. But as the voltage goes down, the capacitor discharges, less current is going to go through the uh, resistor over time. And when you get the current low enough, again, that's when the transistor is going to start limiting current. So that is uh, really about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen. And check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.